All right, uh, we are uh, doing the last lesson on binomial distribution here today. And uh, the next time we see you, we'll be talking about geometric distribution. And uh, <clears throat> you should know by now how to deal with uh, um, probability distributions like this one right here, okay? Um, but uh, let's just talk about shape. Uh, let's say we want to describe the distribution, okay? So obviously which one is the most likely here and we would say uh, one is the most likely right um, with zero being a little less only 23 percent uh, this one's a little bit more than zero so that would be a little bit higher I'm drastically overestimating this needs to be a little bit higher now um, and then this one goes to eight percent which is going to be quite a bit lower right and then you have like a one percent which is basically like a dot and then like really tiny out here what would be the shape of this this rarely happens right what would be the shape I would say this is skewed to the right I would say it's skewed to the right and so I'd say the shape of this sucker is skewed to the right. It's more likely to have a zero or one or two um, with O blood than uh, to have like four or five, right? Okay, so that would be how I'd describe it. Remember, we talked about describing things in chapter one. Don't forget your socks. All right. Okay, so the next thing, shape, center. How can we find the center of this, All right? And by the way, there's the graph if you actually want to graph it out. How do we find the center? Oh, I don't want to tell you. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, we could use the mean or median here, right? What would be the middle amount? Um, <coughs> excuse me. And <coughs> normally with skewed distributions, we would use median and uh, um, IQR, if you're smart. Um, but we have learned also how to find the mean from this uh, and 6.2 and you would basically you'd multiply down right to find the mean you would multiply down and you would add across right multiply down add across you guys remember doing that okay um, and uh, basically if you do that um, the median is about one um, and the mean is if you do the correct thing it's 1.25 all right so um, all right there you go if I go on you get 1.25 um, and then my spread well, um, I can find standard deviation easily by doing my calculator work, entering all this data into my L1, L2, running one var stat on it. All that stuff should be old hat for you. So the deviation, um, after you do, if you want to really work on the formula in the book, um, you would get a 0.968, or if you plug it in your calculator, you get a 0.968. Um, and that's by doing the L1, L2. Now, here's the issue, all right? If they told me I was going to have five kids and you have a 25% chance of having a kid with old blood, I don't really want to have to list out what's the probability of zero, get it. what's the probability of one kid, what's the probability of two kids having it, three kids, and so on, what we have up here, right? If all I'm given, let's just say this just doesn't even exist, I'm like, let's just say that's all gone. All right, no table has been made. All they give me is say, I got five kids, you got 25% chance, what's the average I would have of a kid, All right? Um, how can I find the mean and the deviation quickly without having to do, you know, oh, well, what's the probability of no kids having it? Okay, you know, no kids having it, remember, would be, you know, 0.25 to the fifth power, right? That would, if I did that, I should get this amount, right? Who wants to do that for every single number? So we have another formula for that, all right? And uh, the formula for it, if we don't have a table, all right, we can do this for binomial distribution. Um, the mean 
basically, I love this. This is the easiest way to calculate mean and standard deviation. You take your uh, amount and multiply it by the percentile. So how many people did I have? Five. Multiply it times your percent, which is 25%. So I would expect 25% of the five to get old blood, which I believe is 1.25. 1.25? Let's try five times 0.25. Yeah, 1.25. That was right. See, I remember from the last page. All right. <clears throat> um, same thing goes for, let's say you're doing a multiple choice test. You get 10 questions. Um, you have a 25% chance of guessing each question right, right? It's multiple choice. How many should you get right out of 10 questions? Well, you do 10 questions. You have a 25% chance of getting it right. How many should you roughly get? Well, you should get about 2.5 if you just guessed. All right? That's the mean. Okay? Now, the deviation has a little bit different formula. Now, remember, you can find all these formulas in your yellow sheet. Uh, if you have a yellow sheet, formula sheet, which is provided for you on the AP test, and hopefully you are carrying that with you uh, and sleeping on it every night. Um, but basically what I would do here is I would, uh, for the old blood situation, I would go, uh, well, I have five kids. Probability of having old blood would be 0.25. And remember, we talked about this um, here uh, on the last lesson. 1 minus P just means basically the inverse. What's the opposite of 25%? And the opposite of 25% is, well, what's probability of not having it would be 75, right? So I know it just adds a little bit more confusion to write 1 minus p, um, but it just means the opposite. So if I do that, I'll get my answer. So I'm going to do a square root of 5 times 0.25 times 0.75, close parenthesis, and I get a standard deviation of 0.9682. Okay. All right, well, let's see, are those the same from the page before? All right, yeah, 0.968, two. Oh, that's a two right there. Extra careful. Um, and then uh, mean is 1.5, yeah. So if they give me a table, I can go whoop, whoop, right, whoop, whoop. If they just give me, like, you know, hey, you got 25% chance, I probably don't want to make a table. It would be easier just to use this formula here. So let's give you a couple other illust illustrations, okay? All right, example, pot of water, Mr. Bullard, 21 AP stats students, did the activity on page 340. Who knows what that is? We uh, assume that students in this class cannot tell tap water from bottle water. Hmm. Ah. Then each has a, a one in three chance of correctly identifying the different type of water by guessing. All right, so uh, they have like I think it's two tap and one bottle water, if I remember the story. And they're trying to guess which one is right. Um, let X be the number of students who correctly identify the cup. Find the mean and standard deviation of how many we should expect. All right. Um, Billard's 21. So there's 21 students, right? So if there's 21 students, all right, let's do this right. The mean. All right. Um, the mean. Uh, percent, I'll put that straight out, say the mean of P, um, is going to be 21 times, because I have 21 of them, and they should get it right one third of the time. So, one third of these guys you would expect to guess it correctly, right? So, if I go one third of 21, that would be seven. I would expect seven people to guess the right amount, right? If they were just completely guessing, seven people. Well, what would be the standard deviation? Super easy lesson today, by the way, guys. I hope you're loving this. I would go the square root of 21 people times the original, which would be a one-third, times the opposite of one-third. Well, the opposite of one-third would be two-thirds. Would you agree? Two-thirds is the opposite of one-third, or the inverse. All right, I'm going to multiply that together. I'm going to go square root, square root, 
or 21 times one third times two thirds and I get a standard deviation so this thing's gonna be spread out a little bit it's gonna be about 2.16 so it's gonna be a little bit more spread out than um, our o, o blood right um, o blood was only had a deviation of one this one's gonna be spread out over m much more time well, at least 21 students too so there you go mean standard deviation let's do one more guessing on the ACT I just did a practice ACT with my students holy moly um, I had literally somebody took 60 math problems and got five right how many should we expect on the ACT all right well here we go on the math section of the ACT there are 60 questions and you have five choices A B C D or E let X represent the event of guessing on the ACT on all 60 questions all right so the mean how many if you just guessed on the ACT what would be my amount okay what would be my amount so the mean would be well I have 60 questions and I should get, if I'm just guessing, I should get about 20% of them, right? And if you do that in your calculator, you should get 12 questions. Right? I should get 12 stinking questions. I got somebody who got only five right. It's almost like they had to have known. They had to have known someone said, I'm going to pick the wrong one. Like that's hard to do to get only five right. You, if I literally put a dog dish labeled A and another dog dish of B, C, D, and E, a dog could do better than getting five out of sixty. Like just going to the right. All you know, right. Okay, oh, which which dish do you want to eat out of now? All right. Oh, put C down. Okay. Um, standard deviation. What's the range going to be though? So I'm going to go square root of 60 questions times what the probability of getting them right is, is 20. And then times that by the reversal. And that would be, I have an 80% chance of getting it wrong. All right, let's pl plug her in and we're going to be done here in no time. Short lessons mean lots of homework time, right? times 0.2 times 0.8 3.9 so we can deviate by about 3.09 that's the average deviation so the average deviation means you know some people could be down in the 9 some people could be up in the 15 right 68% um, of the data is going to be between um, roughly 9 and 15 um, Anywho, all right, there you go. Um, that's all I got, guys. Um, yeah, my my students taking the ACT stunk. Bye. All right, I'm just wasting time. Have a good time. Do your homework. Um, all of the one that deal with binomial. If you get anything that says geometric like bits yeah save that for next week we're gonna deal with everything with geometric stuff next week along with a quiz have a good one guys peace